In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom, dear friend. This is wonderful to be back with you. And again, today in the studio, we have Eliezer Ben Yehuda. Eliezer Ben Yehuda is the grandson of the Eliezer Ben Yehuda, the man who revived the Hebrew language. They were using the Hebrew language for prayers, but he was not used anymore on the street and every day. So this has been happening at the beginning of the 20th century. I was just trying to think. And uh, this was just amazing. And Eliezer, you were born also in Israel. Which yes, I was born in Jerusalem. Yes, Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. From your father, which was Ehud. Ehud, exactly. Ehud, Ehud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is wonderful. I want to tell you, if you want to know more, there is three books here. The Tongue of the Prophet was written uh, by, what was his name? Robert St. John. But the manuscript was really from Chemda, mm -hmm. the wife My of... My grandmother. That's it, your, grandma, the, your grandmother. Um, the wife of Eliezer Ben Yehuda. And you wrote a book with a lot of insight of the story of the, of the family. And again, he, he was telling me, and it's true, I, I bought the book for Martin's birthday mm -hmm. a few years ago. And it's a lady was saying, I couldn't put this book uh, down because it's like all the stories, you know, like family stories and, and more than that. But it's, it's very good. Good, you know, you have like 376 page, so you have time to read it. This is a tiny book, but this is very different. <laughs> it's at just under, under 100. For everybody to think, you know, you can read it, it's not difficult, but it's about the beginning of to rediscover the Hebrew language. So it's called The Beauty of the Hebrew Language. You can find it on our website. And these two ones, you can find them on Amazon, okay? And also, if you want, because I know a few years ago, I was starting to like, wanted to know more. And I was asking, I want to read the Bible more in Hebrew and have commentaries. And some people are like, Fred, don't read that. You know, you can't be, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why people are so afraid. Anyway, I find something very good. And it's called the Chumash. You can find it also. Uh, this is from the Stone Edition. And this is just Genesis. You have in, in Hebrew on one side, English on the other side, and the commentaries. Again, you can find that on Amazon. You can go in, in a maybe Jewish library. Oh, you go on the computer and you can Judaica. find all these things. Judi that's it, Judaica. Yeah. You can find it there. And I've learned a lot of things, and my soul is getting satisfied with all the things that I'm reading. So again today, Eliezer, we're going to dig again in, in Bereshit, in the... In the the book. In the very beginning of the beginning That's of the book, of the first it. book, which is the book of beginnings, That's the word of it. Genesis. That's and it. so yes. now, mm -hmm. to remind our listeners, uh, we're talking about the other meaning of Bereshit, mm -hmm. which means not in the beginning, but for a beginning. And so the sages of Judaism say, if we say for the beginning, then the question to ask is, for the beginning of what? Mm -hmm. And in, uh, in the Hebrew, in the scriptures, we find three different two-word uh, concepts mm -hmm. where the first word is bereshit, mm -hmm. that, is to, that is to say, for the beginning of something. Mm -hmm. And the three words are, or the three two-word concepts are, mm -hmm. uh, Bereshit Darko, which means in the beginning of his path. Okay, Darko the from second the one, effect, from right? The, the second okay. one is Bereshit Tvuato, the beginning of Tvua, which means crop. Okay. You see, okay. the thing that grows out of the fields, you know. Mm -hmm. And the third one is Reshit Chochma, the beginning of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And the uh, these references are. Rashid Darko refers to the faith of that is taught by God. Mm -hmm. In other words, the the faith is taught in the book of faith. Mm -hmm. 
what's the book of faith? What you call Bible, you see. We call it in the Hebrew Tanakh, you see. So, uh, in this, you know, if this is the Rashid that we speak about in the beginning, you see, then what the sages are saying is, God wrote a book, you see. He wrote a book. And then he said, what am I going to do with this book? I have to, you know, I have to do something with it because, you know, uh, if a person cannot speak, the word that we use for him is dumb. And dumb is a person who cannot speak, but also dumb means stupid. <laughs> you see? So, we think of dumb as stupid. Because unless you speak out, unless you let us know what it is that you have learned, that you have mastered, mm -hmm. then you're meaningless. You see, you may have all the wisdom in the world, but if you don't speak up, you're not considered wise at all. You see, so God, in his great wisdom, in his great knowledge, in his great abilities, he writes this book, and he says, who am I going to give it to? Because he had to. Where? Because mm -hmm. you have to, exactly. Mm -hmm. you see. So God creates a world, and in this world he puts people. Mm -hmm. And to one particular group of people, the seed of Abraham, mm -hmm. he gives the book, the book mm -hmm. Rashid Darko, you see, the beginning of his path. And we, in Judaism, we have a path to... Tread, mm -hmm. and it is called halakha. Mm -hmm. You see, and halakha is actually the path of righteousness. Mm -hmm. From the faith. From the faith. And defect. from Rashid Darko, from, mm -hmm. from God's teaching, mm -hmm. you see, mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. But others say, no, no, it's not that. It's Rashid Tuato, the beginning of his crop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is his crop? You see, the crop is something that you plant in the ground and it comes up, you see. So again, they say, okay, so God needed, you know, he had this book and he had to give it to somebody and uh, he wanted to give it to somebody and uh, he, um, he gave it to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. So you so are called the people of the book, which is interesting. Correct. Is that exactly, yeah. precisely. Yeah. So we are the people of the book. We are Rashid Darko. And so we are coming to get to know more about the book. And to become more connected to the people of the book. You That's see, it. I, as a Jew, you know, I believe that it's very important for Christians who believe that they have been grafted onto mm -hmm. the stock of the people of God. Mm -hmm. I believe it's very important for them to know what the tree is all about. You see, yeah, sure. you can't say, yeah, sure. you can't say, only my branch is important. The tree is important if you're not... You see, you otherwise the branch is going exactly. to die. Yeah. You see, the branch cannot yeah. exist without the tree. Mm -hmm. see. So, the idea of the graft means that, the, uh, that every, every fruit on that tree has to be full of the knowledge of God. It's so true. You know, now that we come here and we're connecting, we're much more alive than we've never been alive. Indeed. Because... And some people say, you look younger. And I say, it's because I'm living here. It's like we're connecting with you and, and we're connecting to the book. Yes. And, it's, and in Hebrew, there is something that, that we need to, to have again. This it's a miraculous book. Exactly. Zephaniah 3.9 that is going to give it back again. And we, need, we are in this first step of coming back to the book. As people, like you kept it, but now we are all coming to connect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because for a very long time, you know, you uh, we didn't accepted, that yeah. not you, but Christians, yeah, yeah, yeah. or people who call themselves Christians, mm -hmm. accepted the, uh, the prophecy and the good works of Jesus, mm -hmm. you see, but they tried to have Jesus without having the root of exactly. Jesus. Not connected. And they say, yeah. the Jesus is so important because he is a, 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 the fruit of the root of David. Mm -hmm. But if you don't like the root of David, how can you like mm -hmm. Jesus? Yeah. You see? He's a Jew. Anyhow, yeah. so 
That is the beginning of his fruit, you see. But then we have a third concept. And possibly this is the most important one. Because it says, the beginning of wisdom. Okay? And what is the beginning of wisdom? There is a saying that is, Rashid Chochma Yirat Hashem. The beginning of wisdom is reverence of the Lord. You see? The awe of the Lord. See? And again, you know, some people think that the word Yirat means fear. You see? And indeed, it is a kind of a fear. You but see? Positive. But it is, it's the, it's the fear of reverence. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see? It's like when you stand in front of the statue of Moses in Rome. Mm-hmm. You know? And see the and, awesomeness. And and it's so awesome. Mm-hmm. And Michelangelo was so smart to do such a large statue. Mm-hmm. If he would have done a Moses that was only life-size, he wouldn't have mm-hmm. succeeded in making it awesome. You see? Mm-hmm. But he made it more than life-size, and all of a sudden it became awesome. You see? And this awesome is what we're talking about, Yirat Hashem. Being, having this awe to God. Mm-hmm. You see? Now, there is a difference between that and between fear. Mm-hmm. And it's very interesting to note, by the way, as an aside, you know, we're going off on a tangent, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know that uh, in the book of Genesis, when it speaks about Jacob and his, and his connection with God, mm-hmm. Jacob speaks about his ancestors, Mm -hmm. about his father Isaac and his grandfather Abraham. Abraham. Mm -hmm. And Jacob says a couple of times in the text, he says, I swear by the the love of my grandfather or by the faith of my grandfather and the fear of my father. Mm -hmm. Now he is talking about Fear. Mm-hmm. You see, it's pachad Yitzchak. The fear of Isaac mm-hmm. is the experience of being tied up on the altar. Mm-hmm. You see, that was a fearful experience. Yes. Very and he wasn't fearful a young, experience. He was not a boy. He was not a little boy. No, he was, he was a, a man. Yes. You see, but that's just an aside, and we're going to come right back now to Genesis because we don't want to finish the second show without finishing this particular uh, dissertation, you see. So, God created for a beginning Mm -hmm. for these different kinds of beginnings, Mm -hmm. you see. It could be the beginning of his path, the beginning of his crop, or the beginning of wisdom. Okay? Mm -hmm. And now we're going to leave the first word. Mm -hmm. Thank God. And we're going to go to the second word. In the beginning, Mm -hmm. bara. Bara. Bara created. Oh, wonderful. Here we are. We now see the masons putting up the walls, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we have to ask two questions. And the question is, what Mm -hmm. and who? Now, you know, when you are a newspaper man, you learn to ask all the questions, not just what and who, but also where. Why? Uh, but where, no, why we already discussed. That was the first thing yeah, we discussed, yeah. you see. But here, the, 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 the where we don't have to ask because he did it I'm in space. Mm-hmm. No, he did it in oh, space. Okay. You know, yeah. God created mm-hmm. in space, mm-hmm. you see. But what did he create? Okay. And so, you know, some people say, well, you know, uh, he created uh, the heaven and the earth. That's what it says. Mm-hmm. And the Lord, the beginning, the Lord created the heaven, the heaven and the and earth. earth. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, wh- how, how did he do that? You, what, is, what is heaven? What is earth? What, you, what is this? You know. Mm-hmm. And so, if we look at the text mm-hmm. in the Hebrew, the text tells us the words that come after bara mm-hmm. is et hashamayim. Ve'et ha'aretz. Et ha'shamayim is the heavens. Mm-hmm. Ve'et ha'aretz is and the earth. Mm-hmm. But shamayim, mm-hmm. 
That's the Hebrew word. For heaven. For heavens. Mm -hmm. And before we come to the word heaven, we have et. Mm -hmm. What is et? It's the letter Aleph and the letter Tav. Right. It's something that's made up of the letter Aleph and the letter Tav. Which is the first but one and the last it has one. no Hebrew meaning. There is no meaning to that word in Hebrew. Grammaticians, mm -hmm. people who are experts of grammar and of syntax and everything like that, you know, Professor Iggins from uh, uh, My Fair Lady, mm -hmm. you know, he would have told you, you know, that it's the proper way to give you the definite article of the verb. You see, something that explains mm -hmm. the verb, you see, is the definite article of the verb. And et is used with the definite article of the verb that answers the question, what to the verb? Bara, mm -hmm. if it created something, just any old kind of heaven, you would say, Bereshit bara hashamayim, just hashamayim. But if you say et hashamayim, that means this specific kind of heaven and this specific kind of earth, which is true, grammatically speaking. Mm -hmm. But in the Hebrew, we ask a philosophical question, not a grammatical question, mm -hmm. and we say, why do we use this et? Where is it coming from? I didn't see it coming. All of a sudden it was there. You know. Why was it there? And so we say, as you so wisely noticed, that the word et is the first letter, aleph, and the last letter, taf. And what the rabbis mm -hmm. who are giving an interpretation and a greater meaning to the words than the sum of the letters are saying, what is being told here is God created Alpha to Omega, Aleph to Tav, everything from the beginning to the end, which means the heaven and the earth. Because again, in the concept of the letter, exactly. the first and exactly. the is like all together. There is right. the beginning and the end, and the thing in the middle. Right, mm. exactly. And all the letters, I mean, it all makes sense, because yeah. all the letters have the creative power. Yes. So if Bereshit Baha Et, yeah, it's everything to from an yes. to Then he goes on to say further, mm -hmm. he goes and he says, Vehaaretz haita tohu vavohu, and the earth was void and unformed. Mm -hmm. Actually, in Hebrew, tohu vavohu are words that we do not use. The, what does it mean, void and unformed? Tohu bohu? Yeah. Because in French we yes. use that. You, yeah, they take it from the Hebrew, mm. you see? But it's, it's like, you know, using nonsense syllables. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. You see, to, to mean, you know, they talked on and on and on, yeah. saying nothing. Uh -huh. You see, blah, blah, blah. So, the same thing, tohu bohu. Tohu bohu. Rien du tout. Nonsense. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. see? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. what is referenced here is a very interesting concept. Mm -hmm. And the concept is one of the foundations of Jewish mysticism. Jews are not supposed to be mystics. Mm -hmm. Concrete people. <laughs> yes, we are not supposed to get involved with mysticism because we say, you know, when you go into mysticism, you can get confused and you can get you know, you can do things that, are, that you shouldn't do. Man should live his life on this earth, with this earth, as given by this earth. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. Live in your milieu. Mm -hmm. You see? And stay there. You see? Don't try to build uh, uh, the, the Tower the of tower. Babel. Exactly. You see? Yeah. Don't try to build uh, you don't know palaces, yeah. palaces in space. You see, because if you do that, you know, you can, you can be down. lost. Mm -hmm. You can be lost. You can be so much in space that you are no longer upon this earth. Mm -hmm. So, they say, what is this tov avo? What is this void and unformed? And they explain that in order for God, we always speak about God creating something out of nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, God created this world out of nothing. There was nothing before and now God created the world. And so, whenever we think about God, we think about the God of creation. Mm -hmm. And 
in the scriptures, time and again, we speak about uh, uh, his, the creation speaks his glory. Mm -hmm. God is uh, uh, owner of heaven and earth because he created them, mm -hmm. you see, etc., etc. And so we say, how could God create something out of nothing if there was no nothing? You see, everything that there is, it's right here, it's right there, it's somewhere else, but it is. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in space, it is. Mm -hmm. You see, space itself is not a void mm -hmm. because it's the dwelling places of all the planets and of all of God's creation. So if that's the case, what, is, what are we talking about here with God creating something out of nothing? And in Jewish mysticism, we speak about a thing that is called tzimtzum. Mm -hmm. Tzimtzum, you see, you can, it's, it's, it's an otomanopeic word, you see, that, that, that goes tss, tss, tss. Mm -hmm. You see, and every time you, you say tss, you know, it, it's going like this, you see. And what it is doing is, it is squeezing that which exists in order to have a space where it does not exist. You see, if we take something, you know, like the glass that's on the table, mm -hmm. and we destroy it, you know, so there's going to be a space, supposedly, where the, the glass used to be. Now, it's not void in our case, because there's air there, mm -hmm. you see. But in terms of concrete things, it is no longer mm -hmm. the glass, you see. So in order for God to create something out of nothing, the first half of creation now is not even building the foundation or writing, preparing the blueprint for, for building. Mm -hmm. You see, before you do that, God had to create nothing mm -hmm. so that he could make something out of nothing. And this is the tzimtzum. Mm -hmm. You see, and then from that he goes on to have the creation and to have Aleph to Taf, to have everything. And then he gives us a um, description mm -hmm. of the stages of creation. Creation was wholesale. You see, God created A to Z, mm -hmm. you know, Aleph to Taf, mm -hmm. okay? But he created it in stages. Mm -hmm. You see, first he said, let there be light which is the, uh, you know, it's not the light of day. No. It's the light of God's creation, of God's existence. Mm -hmm. We call it the primordial light. You the see? pre? Primordial, before mm -hmm. creation. Okay. Okay. You see, so God makes this creation by saying, let there be light. But it's not the light of the sun or the moon or anything else, because in terms of the story of the six days of creation, the, uh, creates this creates on Wednesday, yeah. right? So there was no moon and sun or whatever have you, you see. But it goes stage by stage from his presence. The beginning is his presence. That's when he's doing that tzimtzum, you see, when he's squeezing everything into atoms, into, you know, all yeah, these things. Yeah, when see? you were speaking about that, it reminds me like nu nuclear atom and all. Yes. The thing that we discover now, yes. who was already there, mm -hmm. is all part of... Yes. In the beginning, exactly. it's like there. Exactly. Yeah, and concept. then we have the beginning of the second chapter where it says the heaven and the earth was done and all their uh, hosts. And on the seventh day, the Lord rested. And on the seventh day, God hallowed the seventh day, you see, and called it. Now, the interesting thing about this, and we are finishing the program with that, mm -hmm. is that if you learn this lesson in the Hebrew, mm -hmm. then God actually signed his masterwork. You know, it's like somebody, an artist paints a beautiful painting, so when it's all done, he signs it, right? Mm -hmm. So where is the signature of God's masterwork? It's in the last three words. Mm -hmm. The last three words, three Again, it's him. God. Mm -hmm. Verse 3 in chapter 2, 3. Mm -hmm. The verse says, God finished 
Asher bara Elohim la'asot, that which the Lord in creation did. That's a very convoluted sentence. What do you mean in creation the Lord did? You know, why don't you say that that which the Lord created? That would have been so much easier. But as it turns out, if you have bara Elohim la'asot, three words. So bara is... Betresh Aleph. Is a constructing, I mean, no. Uh, creating. creating. Yes. Elohim, Elohim is the God. Lord. La Asot, La Asot in doing. doing. Mm -hmm. To do, you mm -hmm. see. But the interesting thing is that the last letter of mm -hmm. each of those three words, you see, okay. bara is what? The last letter? Aleph. Aleph. Right. Elohim. Elohim, the last letter is? Mem. Mem. La Asot, the last letter is? Tav. Tav. And so what does God sign? Emet. Emet. Yes, which is truth. truth. Which is truth. Which and is the, the numerical first value. Uh -huh. And the numerical value of it is 441. Which 4 plus 4 plus 1 is 9. 9 is the truth of creation. Mm -hmm. And the root of 9 okay. is 3, which okay. is the name of God. Amazing. And there you have the signature. <laughs> very good, very good. Again, time is just flying by. Thank you, Eliezer, again for what you've done and you know, sharing with us. Friends, it's so just wonderful to be able to share Hebrew nuggets, you know, and it's like really helping us. Creation is creation. There is no evolution. You know, it's, it's like putting all the things at the right place. Now, don't forget, if you want to watch our program, you can, you can watch the one, the previously one now, we've put them all on YouTube. So if you miss one, you can look at it, you can learn with it, you can, you can have teaching, uh, speak with your friends and your family. And uh, this is all for you to be able to use, okay? And don't forget, we are living in the last days. You've been watching In The Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you in two weeks, same time, same station, for the next program from In the Last Days.